Hello and welcome to Frozen Synapse Live number 21. Today we'll have somewhat of a special episode where we're concentrating on a single player, namely Jeffis. Jeffis has been first on the global rankings ever since ELO was implemented, but he's just earlier today got knocked down to second place by Wonder Hero. Both players are great play really great players, so I expect there to be much competition about that number one spot. And with me today is um, Nietzsche. Hello Nietzsche. Hey! How's it going? Going fine. Great, so I'm excited to uh, have a look at some of these games today. Um, yeah, so Jeff has just got overtaken by Wonder Hero, and it couldn't come at a better time because they are about to face off in the finals of DGL 12. And so hopefully, um, this show today will be a nice, um, I guess, prelude to our show on Saturday. Yeah, and um, the plan is to on Thursday, which is the next stream, is to have a Wonder Hero Rama. So we'll be looking at a bunch of his games. Ah, uh, okay, great. That sounds like fun. Um, and uh, so yeah, hopefully uh, we get some great matches there in the uh, in the finals of um, DGL 12. And uh, you know, maybe maybe Jeffus can come back and reclaim that number one spot. We'll have to see. Yep. It wouldn't surprise me if he did, so... Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me either, but... Um, uh, we haven't gotten to see a lot of... Uh, Wonder Heroes games yet. Um, he's pretty much been robbed of... Winning a DGL, like... <laughs> a number of times, so... Um, I'm, I, I have a feeling... I have a feeling that... Uh, that this one that this one belongs to Wonder Hero. I'm just gonna go out there and make make my prediction. <laughs> I think uh, I think Wonder Hero's got this one. Maybe or maybe not. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Well, anyway, first up is a match between uh, Jeffis and the Shrike. It's from I think it's from DJ Lab Two probably. I'm not entirely sure. Okay. And. Well, Jeffis didn't get eliminated, to say it that way. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, it looks like we have a, a secure match, um, and, uh, Jeffis has won the bid, and he, looks like he bid to make the sniper pretty ineffective. Yeah. Uh, uh as, as you can see, there are a lot of walls and, um, well, it, in his uh, in his bitted area, so the sniper it will uh, it'll be hard for to strike to find a way to to use that unit, and um, hope you know I think Jeff's strategy here will be to play uh, play the game as if you know uh, he's a unit up because um, that sniper is so ineffective on this map. Yeah, and there's not a lot of walls here really, so. While his shotgun is useful for defense, of course, he can't really use it all that aggressively due to the lack of walls. Yep. So, um, why don't we just take a look right here at turn one. Um, Very defensive start on both players' part. The Shrike does an interesting maneuver up there with his MG and Sniper, moving it up and around that building. Uh, yeah, it looks like he's trying to um, find a useful position for the sniper um, uh, along the uh, right side of the wall of that building, um, at least I'm guessing, uh, where it can at least peer down um, through some of the green area. Uh, Jeffus runs a um, quick uh, little distraction uh, ploy near the end of the play, near the end of the turn um, that's probably just anticipating um, any uh, any movement along that left flank um, and he's trying to uh, well, just keep keep units out of there and, and so that's, yeah, that's, a, that's uh, a nice play. I think play. the point there was to just allow MG1 to get in there without getting killed really. Right. Yeah, so. absolutely. 
an effective mo move, of course there wasn't actually anything there, but if there were anything there, then that would have likely succeeded in getting MG1 in a nice position to kill or at least prevent an advance. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I guess let's l go into turn two. And wow, so to strike, uh, or sorry, Jeffus advances with the number one, moves it up. Uh, really nice move, actually, because um, uh, he now has the advantage on uh, to strike's number one MG. Uh, really nice move there, actually. Um, something I probably wouldn't have thought of. Um, looks like he completely anticipated uh, to strike's move there. Yep. So let's just look at the next turn. Uh, okay. Nothing much really happens except a fire fight starts between MG1 of Jeffis and the Shrike's MG. But yeah. I don't think either will get a kill shot there, or maybe the Shrike will. I'm not sure. Well, I think. I don't know. I mean, it, it might he might have the kill shot, but regardless, it looks like that number 2 MG is going to be toast here from the shotgun unless it can do some really nice dodging. Yeah. Um uh the shotgun is just very close uh to number 2 there and yeah. it's it's likely that it'll get taken out. Um so why don't we just look at turn 4 see if we get a trade or see what happens. Yeah, the shotgun does manage to take oh, out the MG, uh, uh, and yeah. the MG does get a kill shot on Jeff's MG, and mm -hmm. the Shrike is now advancing rapidly, but it will be hard for him to get into the zone because of the MG and shotgun. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think his best bet... Well, I don't know. I uh, Probably his best bet is to leave the sniper right where it is, and um, try to get in... Uh, Somewhere like if you just down into the left of his uh, number one MG is probably the weakest point in um, Jeffus's bid area right now. Although he could try to swing really pretty far to the left and get in the <clears throat> little nook there um, uh, that's created by that sort of doorway on the left. <laughs> That's a good enough description. <laughs> um, so yeah. Yeah, let's just watch turn 5, see if anyone gets a kill. Hmm, no kills on turn 5. But I don't think the Shrike is in a position to really get into the zone within turn 6 and stay there for long enough. So he's basically yeah. lost this match now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he... He's at a point now where he just... Uh, it's... I, I'm surprised he didn't make a more aggressive move last turn, but... Um, I don't know exactly what he would have done. Um, anyway. Well, let's just see how it turns out. Yeah, and you can see the Shrike just throws his units um, into the bid area. He knows he's going to lose, but... I suppose if Jeffus had just turned around or something, done something stupid like that, uh, he would have gotten in. Yeah, and let's go on to the next match, another one be between Jeffus and the Shrike, and it's a disputed match. And with nice 5v5 teams, with a slight advantage in Jeffus' favor, seeing as he has a shotgunner while uh, the Shrike has a s another sniper instead. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm still loading right now. Um, There's a lot of walls and cover, so it's a pretty interesting map. Um, yeah, slightly in Jeffy's favor, but not by a huge amount, I'd say. Yeah, it looks like a, a very interesting map. I, I would say that... Um, to strike does have a good chance at securing the uh, rights, the like a 
very large portion of the right side of the map um, uh, with his snipers. Uh, at the same time, I mean, the middle is what it's really all about, and um, it looks like Jeff is, is in a, probably a slightly better place to try and take the middle. Um, Though, I'm not entirely certain. It looks like uh, just a very interesting match. So, yeah. why don't we look at turn number one? Jeff is goes very heavily towards the top there. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, uh, that's curious to me. I don't know what the... Uh, hmm. Let's see. What is the shotgun doing up at the top? Where is it going to go? What do you think? Well, I'm guessing it's going towards the next building there. Ah, uh, yeah. Then again, then Interesting. it could get vulnerable if it's not careful. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's a very, uh, very interesting choice. Uh, I guess the m more natural thing to do may might have been just to send it along that uh, column of buildings on Jeff's side of the map. Um, but this way is actually very interesting because um, it's going to force uh, to strike where he has the he has this advantage on the right side and and perhaps if he's able to post the shotgun up in that building in the uh, top center portion of the map, he's going to be able to uh, keep to strike back um, along that right side and. Um, then per perhaps I guess his other units uh, could have a better chance of um, taking the middle. Just an interesting, I guess, strategic decision from Jeffus. Uh, I would, like I said, I think the more natural play would have been to just send it um, along the buildings on his side. But I don't know. I mean, it's not necessarily the better decision. Yeah. So let's watch the next turn then. And as I predicted, it's going towards the building there, and he does a bit of distraction there, which can be useful as it, if his lucky slow things down. Didn't actually have much of an effect, of course, but... Right. And, um... It looks like we're in an engagement between the snipers. Um, I, I'm expecting to strike sh uh, sniper is winning here. Um, and that Jeffus will have to move. Um, let's see, what else is notable about this position here? Um, I don't know. I'm really impressed, though, with this decision I was talking about earlier and how he's using the number four and the number one um, along this building up here. Um, that, to me, is it's just very interesting. It'll be it, like uh, cool to see how... Uh, that turns out in the f for the rest of the game. Yeah, and I really like the position of the strikes number one MG down there. It's while it doesn't yeah. have a huge view, it does hold a nice position on the flank there, and that will help him get boxes out. For example, as it will be able to protect the lower part of the map. Oh yeah, absolutely. I I I completely uh. Agree. Um, I think that's a that's a nice decision um, that he must have. It's uh, a decision also with a lot of foresight. He must have thought about that idea from the very beginning, obviously. Um, so yeah, I agree. I really like um, the choice to uh, place an MG at that window there. Yeah. So but why don't Jeff we look at turn three? Jeff is had scouted it apparently though. Ah, uh, okay. Which does make it a less of an advantage, but it's still a nice position even though Jeff is new about it. Yeah. Um, so why don't we look at turn 3? Yeah, I just and... looked at it. Oh, sorry. And he has some nice maneuvering here, bit defensive, but this on this map it's not easy for either of the players to go particularly aggressively. Yeah, uh, this is just, um, I don't know, it's just tremendously interesting to me um, as uh, well I mean I think Jeff is, has the advantage here what do you think? I think well he's, just got a he's got the better. positional advantage definitely but 
it will be hard for him to actually run anything down into the middle because the Shrike has heavily covered that area. Yeah. And that's where the boxes are likely to, sp to spawn. So depending on where the boxes spawn, the advantage could go either way, really, at this point. Yeah. Yeah, why don't we just take a look at turn 4. This is uh, shaping up to be really pretty interesting. And wow, more... Not even... I don't even think we've seen a single firefight um, yet in this game. Well, there was the of... sniper engagement, but oh, that right. didn't yeah. actually come to bullets. Right. Um, um, yeah, a lot of just really smart positioning. Although, I'm a little confused here as to why to strike chooses to move that number four sniper um as it did a was doing a great job covering that sort of middle lane um well it's because if it stood there it would have disappeared right it would have right, escaped but i mean just he uh, couldn't really stay behind that cover and without the cover it's far from as big an advantage that's true that's true um yeah. Um, so why don't we just take a look at turn five? I mean, looks like the boxes. Uh, actually, it well, looks like the Shrike gets some nice box placement here. Yeah, he, but so does Jeff. Is while the Shrike can easily get the two boxes on the right there, the Jeff is can get the one at the top and the one right by the middle. Yeah. Um. I think at least. Which would leave. Which would yeah. Which would leave. Uh, to Shrike with. Th uh, with three, I mean, if he can actually do it, this is um, yeah. quite uh, quite a tense position, especially as um, Jeff's shotgun is poised to take out um, number three. I think if he maneuvers it cor correctly, um, I don't know. I don't. Know. It's this is very complex and difficult to analyze as. Especially <laughs> seeing, uh, you know, it's... I don't know exactly what has been scouted, so... Yeah, uh, let's just take a look at turn 5 of them. Okay. Huh, no actual damage wow. there, though plenty of firefights. Yeah, this is fantastic play. Um... I'm just watching this again. I don't know exactly what happened there. Let's see. Oh, it looks like... It looks like Jeffus runs the number one as a distraction so that the number three can grab the box. Um, and, uh... He gets his shotgun in a really nice position as well. Yeah, he gets his shotgun in a fantastic position here. Um... And, uh... Wow. Um... Yeah, that's a... That's actually... That... that uh, from the for the number one, uh, or for the number three from the number one, it's a really nice play. That's something that you can't actually um, plan for. I mean, you can't you can't um, uh, safely uh, run a uh, uh, an ignore order, um, guessing that 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 that's what he's going to do. Yeah. So uh, let's just watch turn six of them, and he gets and the strike gets flanked by a sniper down there, and gets his number two MJ killed by the shotgunner. Yeah, he runs um, another <laughs> another distraction. He says, "I saw it coming." Uh, yeah, that's. That's really tough. I, did you see the Did you see the number of the or the shotgun coming? That's yeah. that was a uh, that was quite the uh, quite the play there. As you can see, it's just it's just great how um, I mean these players seem to actually grasp these positions where there's just so many possible distractions, so many um, I just. Uh, a position so complex tactically, and you would you you saw for so many turns there, just like really pretty perfect play from both sides, and it's just it just seems as though um, this turn right here uh, 
Jeff is, just gets the better of it with some bold, bold and um, really just nice moves. I agree, and uh, I think it's pretty much lost now by the Shrike. Yeah. Had his number one MG survived, he'd still have a good chance of victory, but now he's not really got any way of grabbing more boxes, so defeat is very, yeah. very likely. Yeah, and you can see he's he's already um, conceding, uh, which is makes complete sense here. Yeah, uh, let's just watch number seven. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting how he moves on turn seven there. <laughs> and yeah. On turn eight there. That's what I. That's man. I had watched that and I had said that he was conceding. So. So. Yeah. Um, a nice, very nice victory by Jeff is here. The Shrike played very well, but once he lost that MG over to the left, his situation was almost unwinnable. Yeah, abs absolutely. Um, just a really complicated game um, tactically, and uh, I don't know. It just it just came down to some uh, aggr good aggressive moves from Jeff is. Um, yeah. Yeah. And finally, the we last have the... in this pairing is the charge between the two. Mm hmm. And three versus three. And interesting team composition. And for once, I'd say it's slightly in the strike's favor, seeing as he has a grenade launcher. Yeah. Um,. And, uh, it looks like, hmm, it's funny, doesn't it look like, I guess they both bid the same length, huh? Yeah, huh. roughly, at least. Yeah. Um, well, not m all that much to say about this map, nice assortment of cover and all that, so let's just play turn one. Nice and aggressive maneuvers by the Shrike there. He's concentrating all his units up top. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And it Wait looks like Jeff is predicted that as he's got two units at the top. Yeah, we watched this game already. Did we? Yeah, remember that uh, sh the shotgun and the grenade here? I remember this. It might have been a duplicate or a similar map. No, 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 there was this... I, Jeff has just said the... This was shown last time, oh, but without IRC. Ah. Yeah, okay, then I think we'll, we watched this last well, time. Well, then we can might as well just go on to the next match. Yeah. Because I remember, I, I remember the placement of the shotgun and, and the... And now we've got Jeffis versus Junglist, who's apparently some... Australian streamer or video maker or something. I'm not exactly really? sure. He's uh, I, he I, does. I've never met him. I've never. No, me neither. But yeah. What, so what does he do? I'm not entirely sure. Ask some Australians or something. Ask Sinroth. I think he knew. Okay. Sinroth isn't around at the moment though. Junglist, isn't that like a League of Legends? Term or something? Don't you like, or something? One of those Dota games? <laughs> Isn't that where it comes from? Um, no, I think it only comes from his nick, but I'm not sure. Okay. I thought that was anyway. Um. Okay, so yeah, so he's just some streamer, you said, or something? Uh, I might as well look him up. Does he stream this game? No, I don't think so. Um, hmm, it's apparently a slang term as well for someone living in the area of West Kingston. Okay. Hmm. Oh well. Um, <laughs> anyway, I didn't find anything on the first page, so. Yeah. Why don't we just look at the mat? Yeah. Uh, the match. It looks like uh, once again we see they both bid the same length. Um, yeah. And. Uh, so the junglist has won the bid, and um, 
while uh, Jeff's team is interesting, I mean, the sniper, uh, it's again a, a it's map where... It's uh, kind of a third this, wheel here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, this is compensated um, for by the fact that he has the, the grenade. Um, grenades are just terribly useful in charge. Um, for the most part, at least. And Jeff has says this is a good game, so... Why don't we just take a look at turn number one? I've already looked at it. Oh, okay. Nothing particularly interesting happens there. They just maneuver up to some nice positions. And both players are going very aggressively on turn one. Which uh -huh. might come back to bite the junglist in the ass. Well, maybe. Why don't we look at turn two? Yep. And quite predictably, Junglist loses an unit to a grenade. Yeah, it looks like he wasn't aggressive enough there. Um, he just kind of sat in it. Um, and uh, let's see, at the end of turn one, where did they um, scout each other? Um, no, because he was ducked at the end of turn one. He stands right at the end of turn two, or right at the start of turn two. Um, so just a, a, a really nice, well-placed grenade from Jeffus. Um, Junglis really should have done a better scouting job on turn one, and instead of uh, popping up and looking at the beginning of turn two, he should have done it right at the end of turn one. Um, if he had, I believe he would have seen um, seen the grenade and he would have not just sat there and waited to get hit by it, so. Oh, and I found out who Junglist is. Uh, he's apparently Jeremy Ray and he's an Australian television presenter and video game reviewer. Oh, wow! That's really cool. I didn't even know we had people like that uh, playing this game. That's great. So yeah, that's that's really neat. Um, well, that's that's really cool. I don't know. <laughs> uh, wish he was on IRC more, and we could uh, talk to him about what that kind of what that kind of life is like. Um, anyway, uh, let's move on to turn three. And. Uh, nice position there. I'm not sure if Junglist actually saw that MG. Ah, yeah, he did. So I'm guessing Jeff's MG1 will be dead pretty soon. Um, but I'm not I entirely don't know sure. What? I mean, we're you're at the beginning of turn four right yeah. now. Yeah, this is incredible because they both just passed each other. Um. They kind of go out of sight, so it'll be like whoever whoever wins. This is a kind of a random engagement here. Um, yeah, uh, let's just take a look at turn four, maybe. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Uh, and yeah. Well, <laughs> I'd say Jeff is, has lost the match now. Yeah, that's really crazy. So he must not have seen the. Uh, he knew he was there somewhere, but not where. Oh, okay. Apparently. Surprising he didn't turn to shoot, but... Anyway, um... So why don't we just look at turn 5 as, yes, the junglist has this game won. Ah, Jeff has apparently assumed he was behind the cover. Which he wasn't at that yeah. point. Yeah. Well, uh, let's just watch the last couple of turns, see if Jeff is actually manages to do anything about this. <laughs> and he loses his grenade. And yeah, he's basically lost now. <laughs> yeah. Well, very nicely played here by a junglist. Yeah, absolutely. And we've got two more matches versus the junglist uh, 
Um, the next one is the, uh... Disputed? Yep, Dark Disputed, and, um... Three versus three teams. This yeah, time, and balanced yeah. teams. Yep. The um, map itself... I'm not quite sure, but I think it's a bit in Jeffy's favor, maybe. But, yeah, I'm fucking um, certain. I really have no idea. It looks very even. Um, so... Why don't we just take a look at turn one and and try to figure out? And Jeff, both players really fan out nicely, and Junglist isn't really doing much to protect the upper part of the map, but that part of the map might not be all that essential anyway. Yeah, I think that this map in general will be concentrated on a very small portion in the center of the map. I mean. Just by how the uh, kind of compound of buildings work, um, but why don't we just look at turn two? Because I still don't really. Yep. Ooh, and it looks like just more positioning. Jeffis goes for. Uh, I'm assuming he goes f with the number one. He goes for a flank, flanking maneuver, um, but his enemy just isn't isn't there. Uh, though I don't know, this next turn should be really interesting um, to see how this turns out. Yeah. You want to uh, play turn three? Yep. Okay. Nice move there by Jeffis taking oh, out yeah. that MG. Bit risky, of course, seeing as Junglist Shotgunner might still have been there, or yeah. nearby at least. Mm -hmm. And he's got a nice flanking here with the MG1, which is in a nice position to cover a lot of the map there. And yeah, he's yeah. got m a lot of the map covered now. So yeah, uh, yeah, that and that yeah, losing that unit now, Jeffis has uh, quite a large advantage. Um, so why don't we just play turn four? Some scouting uh, from the junglist. Yeah, he's clearly a very experienced player. Yeah. Uh, oh. Some really good play there. Yeah. And it looks as though... Yeah, it looks as though Jeff is pretty much has all of the boxes except for the one right there in the middle under his control. Yeah. Um so why don't we just finish up the game? Hmm, he doesn't actually take the box switch. Whoa. But he does manage to get the kill on that MG, so that's really nice there. And he started a firefight against that M uh, that shotgunner, but I don't think he can actually kill it. Yeah, and um yeah. It looks as though Yeah, he can't he can't kill the shotgunner. Um it's just gonna dodge out of the way. And now the number one MG has to move because the shotgun is dis is distracting it. Um and so Jeffis's number one MG should be in a position to take it out if it's gonna just stand there and fire. Yeah, so let's see what just... happens. And yeah, Jeffis goes aggressively with his shotgunner, taking out that MG, and then takes nice. out Junglist's shotgun with his MG. So very nicely played there by both players. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, as usual, really, Jeffis got the better moves in the very end, thus winning him yeah. the match. And. We have got one last match between the two, which is, of course, secure, if it will just load. And there... Wow. Very uh, peculiar bid from Junglist. Yeah, that's one of the stranger bids I've seen. Yeah. Um... Not entirely certain what. Uh, well, I guess he okay. thought Jeffis would this... be bidding more aggressively. Yeah. Well. 
also, I mean, he's facing a rocket launcher and an MG. I mean, he has such a huge. If he he just stays clear of the the rocket and um, uh, he has such a huge uh, advantage with just basically just with having two direct fire units. Yeah, but what? that doesn't really explain this bid. I mean, he could have just not bid those top four squares there, and still have wouldn't have been at really any disadvantage. What the hell? Do you, are you getting like some weird bug, buggy replay? What do you mean? I, ha I haven't watched any turns yet. Where is the uh... This is so weird. The rocket launcher is initially placed... Where for you? Uh, just left. Changed, randomly changed places. Uh, let me just watch turn one. That's uh, bizarre. I'm not seeing what you mean. Okay, let me just try and reload the game. <laughs> Cause suddenly the rocket launcher moved to like the top area of the map. Well, for um, me, it's starting actually on the left fire and moving shot. a bit. <laughs> um. Anyway. Okay. So yeah, let's just play turn one. Yep. Um. Well, it's a nice there rocket, but ineffective due to the junglist's positioning here. Yeah. Um, and now it's it's kind of funny because I don't know what good any more rockets um, are going to do. They're just merely going to give junglist snipe sniper more um, vision. So it's kind of a, it's interesting. We'll have to see how it plays out. Why don't we play turn two? Yep. Hmm. Oh, this is interesting. Indeed. Uh, let's just watch okay. the last turn there. Oh, <laughs> nicely placed rocket there. And that allowed him to stay inside the zone for just long enough to win the match. Yeah, that was really... I didn't even think about that possibility of using the rocket to actually create space in the bid area. Because he took... <laughs> so smart. <laughs> he took cuz he took out the wall and part of the bidding area was in the wall. Yeah, that's so really clever. To, that is really that's really nice. <laughs> um yeah, really nicely played there from from Jeffus. Wow. Cool game. Cool game. Yeah. Um, I don't think I would have thought of that. I think very yeah. few people would have thought of that. Yeah, I, I, I didn't, I didn't. I was initially just thinking that the rocket would be completely pointless. Yeah, and we have now got a extermination match between Wonder Hero and Jeffis. Oh wow! I guess they were. A long dark extermination match with oh, yeah. increased with tournament. Turn. I wonder what the story is behind this match, because somebody must have created this game. Yeah, and there's symmetrical teams, and the map itself is symmetrical, so that's pretty interesting. Oh yeah, this is really, and they use five. They uh, what's the story of this match, Jeffus? I mean, who made this map? Uh, Wonder Hero made this as his player okay. one there. Okay. Uh, so he must have just... I don't know. This is a real... This is a really neat map, actually. For extermination. Because it's symmetrical, but at the same time, um... There are units, like, cross on, on each other's side. It's interesting. Yeah, and there's five, exact five mirror. units apiece, which you never see in extermination yeah it's an exact mirror yeah so no one has the advantage here definitely ah uh, you want the uh, match ID Casardo however you pronounce that uh, yeah. this is two eight zero one two three yep so why don't we look at turn one yeah see if anyone gets any kills 
already Ooh. different decisions um, being made from both players. Looks as though Wonder Hero goes for the direct kill on uh, Jeffus' number one MG, doesn't get it. Um, while uh, Jeffus. Jeffus um, blows up the uh, the building that's very close to his number of four MG, just to give it some increased uh, sight. And looks as though those two number fours are very close to each other, and this could be well, it could be a problem. It could be a point of tension for a while. Well, we'll see. So right, let's, let's watch turn, turn two. two. Hmm. Whoa. Oh, and there. Like <laughs> That's a nice move there by Wonder Hero, get netting him two kills. Yeah. One wow. by grenade yeah, nice and one play. via his MG there. And that yeah. gives him a nice advantage here as Jeffis is down to only three units. Only one of which is a direct fire unit. Yeah. Um, so he's got a... Oh yeah, he got him with... Anyway. Alright, so uh... Let's watch turn let's 3. Let's look at turn 3. Yeah, uh, Jeffis does manage to take out the MG in return. Mm -hmm. So it's now down to 4 versus 3. And Wonder Heroes Jeff is pretty nicely cornered there. But it will, of course, still be hard to get the last few kills here. So let's yep. just watch turn four. Oh, wow. and the advantage is now in Jeff's favor as he takes out two of Wonder Hero's units there. Yeah, nice, uh, nice play from Jeffus. Um, and. Uh, I don't know, it looks as though... Well, I don't know if I can say much else about this. Why don't we just look at turn 5? And, um... <laughs> the, uh... Rocket <laughs> and the grenade pass each other. High-fiving high five. <laughs> along the way, uh, yeah. Exchanging um, pleasantries. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe um, some insults as well, for good measure. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, let's take a look at turn six, and... Oh, it's very close. And then, um, yep, so it looks as though, uh, with the cover advantage, Jeff is able to take out, um, the number three, but he's got to be careful, as it looks as though he could get destroyed by a grenade here. Yeah, I think he will be. Yeah. Yeah. And it's now two versus one and only a very few turns left here. Yeah, and both indirect fire units. This is uh, probably one a pretty aggravating situation to play. Yes, yeah, so um, let's just watch the last few yeah. turns here. And well, neither player actually manages to get any kills at all. <laughs> yeah. So nice maneuvering here. Uh, slight victory by Jeffis, winning with a grand total of 10 points, which probably netted a Wonder Hero some ELO points rather than Jeffis. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 uh, I kind of wish that wasn't the case. I kind of wish that the, um, the that ELO didn't work that way and. But it's kind of the point of ELO, really. Um, based on their rating at the time, it would be expected for Jeffis to beat Wonder Hero by more than that, basically. Yeah, but I don't know. I I just I kind of disagree with the the concept because I think um, I don't know. I mean, sometimes you just uh, like a win is a win. Um, y maybe you should get bonus points for um, winning by more, but not, I don't know, personally I don't think you should lose points for a win, it seems a little silly to me. But anyway, 
Um, well, uh, next... think about this. Let's say Jeff is and the last place player plays against each other in extermination, and Jeff is only wins by ten points. Is that as good as he should have been doing? Basically, it makes sense for him to lose yeah, points. Yeah, no, I understand. I, I understand. mean, it might it's not just... make sense for him to lose points against Wonder Hero, but it would make sense for him to lose points against someone ranked even lower. Yeah. So uh, I, the mean, I, I understand. I understand. I'm not. I'm not really griping about it. I think it's yeah. fine. <laughs> um, it's just sometimes, like especially in that case where you had like the two best players playing each other. Anyway, um, um. so let's. The next game is uh, Napo and Jeffus. Uh, it's a dark extermination match. Yep. And um. It I looks have like, no idea who Napo is. I don't know who he is either, but he's really pretty highly rated. Um, and Jeff is now back up to first. Oh! Congratulations, Jeff is. Congratulations. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, are we going to watch turn one? Yep. Okay, let's watch turn one. Oh, so some nice, a nice rocket. It looks like there's so much going on. Nice rocket gets um, catches Napo's MG out of position, and wait, what is happening in this game? Sorry, I was just confused there for a moment, and um, so now Jeffus is at quite a large advantage here as um, now uh, the rocket too is just cornered um, waiting to die and uh, I would say probably the same thing with the grenade launcher anyway why don't we watch turn two oh <laughs> uh, nice move there with the rocket running right into an MG yeah. But Jeff is does lose a new unit to the A shotgun. Yeah, shotgun and grenade double kill, so to so to speak. Yeah. Oh yeah, it looks like it was actually the grenade that got him. Um and so let's look at turn three. Yeah, and now both players have managed to gather all their units together, which does make things a bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no kills on turn three. Some close calls. Oh my. Okay, sorry. Are we looking at turn four? Yeah, I just looked at it. That yeah, was wow. a very nice move there by Jeffis. Fantastic. Um. Uh. I'm trying to kind of figure out. Wow. Yeah. He just. It looks as though I don't even know. I can't e actually tell you what happened here. Uh, why don't we just look at turn five? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting moves with Jeff, his grenade launcher there. He doesn't actually fire, it just moves downwards there and then gets to the window so that it's in a position to yeah. fire in there. And let's yeah. just watch turn six. <laughs> Some nice grenades there. And Napo barely survives there. Um, yeah, this is the very kill. last turn now, and he gets killed by the shotgunner. So very nicely played here as well. Mm -hmm. And let's just move on to the next match. Kay. And there's two more matches left. Ephes versus Mr. Sweetie. In this period. Yeah, we haven't heard. Uh, I haven't heard of Mr. Sweetie yet. Well, um, he's ranked 78 at the moment. He is ranked 78. Um, yeah. Has he been playing in uh, DGLs? Not that I know of. Huh. Okay. So, um, we have a disputed game. And, um, looks as though you have pretty balanced teams. Um, uh, basically a shotgun versus grenader. And Jeffus has the grenade. Yeah. 
so this should be interesting. Lots of walls in the middle there should make yeah. it interesting. Extending all the way from corner to corner. Yeah. Uh, kind of a nice map. I kind of I sort of like that feature where you have sort of the two sides split like this. Um, yeah. Let's just watch it's... turn one. Hmm. Okay. Mr. Sweetie actually stays behind with one of his MGs. Not the wise decision in my opinion. As yeah. Well, it does cover some of the map. It won't be particularly useful once the boxes have spawned. Yeah. Um. Nice. Uh. I, yeah. I I really like um the way Jeffus is playing this though. Um, moving all his units into very useful positions. Um, the grenade especially is very well positioned as it's going to be either firing into the bottom room or the one just to the upper right of it. Not the bottom room, but you understand what I mean. It's got two, di two or three actually uh, different options. Um, I like those moves with the grenade um, bring and the rocket, bringing them into more flexible positions um, from which they can fire into multiple areas. So why don't we look at turn two? Sure. <laughs> and a very nice um, grenade there. A uh, useful tip for the grenades is if you fire them right in a doorway, like just as Jeffus did, the blast yeah. is covers both sides of the door. Yeah, if it covers most it, of the room and most yeah. of the outside. Yeah, if you fire it past, um, it won't uh, blow up the room as much. <laughs> if you could say it that say it that way. So, a uh, really nice place if you're just thinking about where to put your grenades is right in doorways like that. Yeah. So let's watch turn 3 then. Uh, very nice positioning by Jeff is here. Mr. Sweetie is still leaving his MG back there and it's, well, pretty useless back there really. I mean, it well, will. Well, I mean, it does cover the. Yeah, I mean, but it, it would have been more useful if it stepped over to the cover a bit above and to the left of it, as yeah, then I it would be closer to where boxes would spawn and it would have a shorter kill time. I, I completely agree, um, but I understand what he was going for um, with a move like that, basically just leaving one unit back to cover um, all of his side uh, with respect to those buildings. Anyway, um, let's look at turn four. Yep. Looks and like Jeffis gets another shotgun kill there. And the boxes spawn very much to Jeffy's favor, but that's mostly because of good positioning on Jeffy's part. Yeah, and it looks like Mr. Sweet doesn't move at all. Um, I, if you if you're playing against a good player, and you start to f you start to understand that you're actually being outplayed, one of the worst decisions you can make is um to not move your units. Uh, I I only say that because I, I, I've noticed, th I noticed that um, in my own play uh, early on that when I st uh, was getting confused or I was starting to feel as though I was being outplayed I would just kind of not move. Um, the best thing you can do is just just try for something. You know, just um, do something. Um, move your units around and you know just don't leave them in the same place it yeah. makes you very predictable yeah uh, the general rule is never give you your opponent the leisure of having every single one of his predictions come true yeah and because you're just then if there's a single point in your plan that can be exploited your opponent will find it if he's just got enough yeah. time but and basically if you do even a tiny here. move you prevent that from happening or at least makes it much much harder for your opponent yeah and 
that's what's really going on in this game, I feel, is, I mean, Jeff is just picking him apart, um, and it's because all of Mr. Sweetie's moves here are really predictable. Um, and as you can see now, too, um, that number 4 MG, it's, it's, it is, actually is stuck, you know, it can't, it can't move, it can't do anything useful, but, um, try and hold down that position. Of and now, with um, so many of Mr. Sweetie's units gone, um, it's just so susceptible to distraction. Yeah. Um, so I believe that's what we see here on turn 5. Yeah, let's watch that for them. Yeah, nice distraction on Jeff's part there. And he's basically won now. Yeah. So let's I mean, just watch the, the last turn here. And yeah, he kills it off with an MG. And even if it had survived that, the grenade would have gotten it. Yeah, so for newer players, and uh, one thing you guys can pull pull away from um, watching some of these games, um, Jeff's games, is the amount of activity and movement that is happening uh, with all of his units. Very, it's, it's, it's even rare for him to just... Um, Put a, you know one of his MGs behind cover and hold up uh, a certain like area. You can see that he's constantly moving around, um, and uh, this is really yeah in scouting. And yeah, this and is really the way that you that you want to play the game. You can't just stick a unit behind cover somewhere and think that it'll just do it. Think that it'll do its job. Um, well, it can be used flat times, but even yeah, then, you should be moving at least slightly so that you, your opponent doesn't have every prediction come true. Because uh, small movement up or down or to the right or left can wreak havoc uh, on your opponent's plan. Yeah, and if you are going for moves like that, a good a good general principle to follow is that. While uh, one position might be very good, it's absolutely no good if there's no um, if there's no way of retreating from that position. Um, if your unit should get into a, a losing engagement, and when I say retreating, I mean not just ducking, because when you're just ducked behind a cover and cover an open space, your unit there is for the most part. Uh, out of play. It, it's it's not contributing. Um, you, if you're going to keep a unit in one position, you always want to have the option to move it and get it mobile again uh, as soon as possible. Um, you never want it like like we saw in the last match. His MG was just pinned down at one area and it couldn't it couldn't move um, and to try and do anything useful from uh, any other positions yeah so, so uh, the next yeah, game is a disputed the game the very last game in fact yeah I mean we could do more but I think 9 of Jeff's matches is enough for one yeah. stream um, and as said next stream we'll be taking a look at a bunch of Wonder Heroes matches yeah And yeah, here's some interesting teams here. His opponent has somewhat of an advantage due to the shotgunner. This opponent right. is a very new player yeah. as well, so yeah, I don't is expect Jeff is to lose this match. <laughs> I don't either. Um, it's uh, I would say it's, he should he should win regardless of the fact that um, he is at, he does have a. A considerable disadvantage. Um, if this if it was his first game, yeah. So yeah. Um, anyway, so uh, why don't we look at turn one? And it just looks like they are just doing positioning. Actually, yeah. And um, uh, Jeff is a volunteer. Does apparently not know about continue on site because if he did, he would have been using it on his MGs. Yeah. Um, I actually like his positioning. Uh, I obviously uh, the ducking is a little odd. Um, it, it doesn't. It, there's no reason um, to duck in 
these positions. Well, uh, uh, ducking with the uh, MG could make some sense, but the shotgunner really doesn't, yeah. Yeah, well, but this MG, unless he's trying to hide it for some reason, um, this MG uh, can get to cover and be still before Jeffus can get into cover and be still, such that they're engaging each other. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. It has the shorter route to its destination, so it doesn't need to duck. But anyway, um... Yeah, let's... Sh and this was apparently Ivlike's first finished match, so for a first timer, this is actually really well done. Yeah, it is. Uh, the, the, just the overall positioning of the units is really good, and you can see he's actually doing a very nice job um, sort of zoning Jeffus out of the center and fighting for it really well. Um, uh, so why don't we look... What turn are you on? Uh, I just watched turn two. And yeah, as okay. you said, he's ducking way too much. Ducking yeah. with the shotgunner there makes very little sense, and with the MGs too doesn't really make much sense. It would probably make more sense for him if he put the MG2 behind the cover there and had it cover the top part of the map here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, so, why don't we uh, watch turn 3? Yep. He is still doing quite a good job, um, kind of zoning him out. Um, Although, now we see that it would really have been nice for the number 2 MG to be standing up, as uh, it would have denied uh, Jeffus this pos uh, the position of his number 1 MG yep. at the cover. Um, Let's watch number 4. Well, yeah. That's a pretty nice position with the shotgunner Ooh. there, thus taking out Jeffus MG. Yeah. And well, the problem for if like now is that if he's not careful, he'll get taken out uh, in well, the yeah, rear he's losing. by that MG3. Oh yeah, and yeah, yeah he's right. losing his MG1 as well there. I think to the to Jeff's MG. Yeah. Um. And uh. I don't know. This will be interesting. I mean. I personally would run that shotgun right to the window um, to cover that box. Uh, if he does that, he could still be in a, a very decent position. Um, but if he doesn't, I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Why don't we look at turn five? Yeah. And he loses his shotgun or two oh, due to yeah. some very strange maneuvering there. He's actually moving while aimed and ducked. Yeah, um, your shotgun is meant to be as mobile as possible. Um, it's it's meant to be running around constantly. Um, it should never really stop for more than a second. Yeah. Um, unless it's really unless camping a room is particularly useful for your strategy. Um, it should always be moving, and it should never be duck aim moving like that. Well, Not basically, no unit should ever game. be the game moving. Yeah. And let's just watch turn 6 here. And yeah, if like it's now dying. Yeah. Yeah, that's the end. So, and some nice games from Jeffus. Always a pleasure to look at his games, um, as he's such a good player and is now once again at number one so it's gonna be exciting to see uh, Jefferson Wonder Hero fight for that number one spot for a while now um, uh, and uh, be exciting to cover their match um, on Saturday hopefully if, as long as they finish it so ah uh, yeah Buster has a point there but that's not exactly a common situation either so right um, alright, so mm, I guess I'm just we're wondering call how many. Yeah, I'm just wondering how many people are on the global rankings now. Should be quite a few. Ah, yeah, 41.6 thousand as compared to something like 34 thousand before the sales. 
and of course this doesn't include the bunch of people who have been playing on other servers instead right. and haven't been on UK1. So, right. some nice growth. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's really exciting. It's also exciting to see a lot of these new players um, who are showing up for an IRC uh, who are doing really well um, to start off uh, their Frozen Synapse whatever experience careers um and uh so it'll be fun you, everyone should be playing in the dgl so you guys can all get better and um join the competitive player base as obviously we just want more players um more more brains thinking about this game and more ad revenue and <laughs> something like that um all right so Let's, uh, I guess, let's call it a day. Yeah, uh, thank you all for watching, and see you all on 